Well guys, what are we up to today? Well, this is a quickie little Argo video. The camera is currently stuck on with a magnet to the winch mount on my Argo. You can probably guess that we have a grease gun here. Well, part of this video is a response to some of the things on the Argo forums that people have been saying, particularly around um, my use of this vehicle in salt water and on salt lakes with water that's at a far higher salt concentration than ocean water. Um, and everybody worried about the rust and the water ingress. So uh, let me go over a couple things that I'm doing. I took this out for a uh, quick trip in a salt lake yesterday. And so this morning I'm pumping a bit of grease in here to get the water out. It's currently on a trailer and it makes it a little bit difficult to get to the grease nipples if I don't want to roll it back and forth around the trailer. So I have a grease fitting set. And this one here is a little sideways grease fitting that you can slot sideways over a nipple. Really handy to get at them. So, uh, plus there's a whole plethora of other bits and pieces here that you can make use of if you need to, including little right angle fittings like this one as well, which could probably substitute for this. And uh, ones for like getting into the tight spots and little angle ones that you can rotate. It's all really nifty stuff. So, we're gonna use this one. Let's go over the kind of grease that I've got as well and how that plays into the whole salt thing. All right, now this is the grease that I use. It's a Castrol Spherol Ultra Tech 2. This is a marine grade grease that's designed, it says it has special properties in wet environments. It's designed to go all tacky, hence Ultra Tech, in the presence of water. It gums up and stops the water ingress back into the bearings. Um, it's also quite salt tolerant and it's a, uh, a multi-purpose lithium grease. I use this in the drive shaft in my Land Rovers too. Um, very good stuff. So uh, that does help with all the salt and getting the water in. And I found since I've started using that, I'm not pushing anywhere near as much water out of my bearings, maybe a drop or two. But it also means that um, whenever I take this in salt, I push all the water out like I'm doing right now. I, I put grease in it every single time I go out there. Um, I know a lot of people do it like every eight hours, whatever. It's, it's one of those use case scenarios where you do the grease according to the conditions you're putting it through. And I'm going through a lot of salt and I live coastal, it's hard to avoid. Um, so I do it every time I go out. The other thing people picked on was they're worried that everything was going to rust. So let's tell you how I sorted that out. All right, we're over on the wheel hub here. You'll notice there's a bit of a smear mark around here. That's because I put anti-seize on all the wheel nuts. Um, that does help with corrosion and help stop the water getting in as well. Um, but I also give these a pressure wash and a soap up every single time I take it out as well. And I make sure to get in behind the rims. So there's still a bit in here that I have to wash out. Now, I've had this since 2019, since late 2019. And I've been, uh, it's so roughly two years of getting in and out of water and salt stuff. And this is really the only sort of rust pitting we have here. Um, I do let the grease build up around here. It helps keep some of the stuff out of the bearing. Um, but in terms of rust, we can see in behind here, there really isn't very much on the wheels. And part of that is because I don't leave the salt crust sit here. Same thing as over in the receiver hitch here. Um, because I have an aluminium hitch here going into the steel receiver, you can get a bit of biometallic reaction and salt certainly accelerates that. So I make sure that I wash all this thing down very thoroughly each time. There's a bit of mud on the wheels that I've got to tap back off, but crucially we've got in behind the wheel hubs. We'll be doing a bit more of that later today. But it's working relatively well. And by the way, this little setup works really well. So let's get in with the grease gun and see what we can do. Now these little grease fittings are really handy. They've got a nipple underneath here and you can snap them straight on and they won't come off until you pull this little lever back out of the way. So this guy, we can sneak it in, push it in sideways, but we've got to wipe the grease off the nipples first. All right, let's get in and wipe grease off the grease nipple here. For the grease rag, and we'll slide our fitting on sideways now, it can be a little tricky to position that and get it on there. 
I'm going to take this off the grease gun, position it, and then attach the grease gun after the fact. But which makes things a little easier. You do get grease all over your hand, but that happens. There's a little Teflon insert in there. And we can clip you straight on and pump a bit of grease through. And I'm just listening for the crackle of the grease coming out the bearing. It usually takes a few pumps. My hand's probably in the way here. Where's my viewfinder? It's probably enough. The fronts usually take a little bit more than the, re than the rest, probably because there's a bit more loading on them. And I can see a bit of grease pushing out the back there now. So we're doing pretty well. All right, now we'll pull you back off. And that's one bearing done. Seven more to go. Now, the experienced among you will tell me that these are for doing grease. That's of course correct, but these are a little bit far off center for me to get to. And I've got everything still strapped down and I don't want to, uh, to take it off the trailer just yet. So we'll keep going with what we're doing. So it turns out I did need to move things so I've taken it off the hoist I'm going to use this or taking it off the trailer I'm going to use the standard grease fitting with my camera on the grease gun here so I've got a magnetic mount and the grease gun is steel I also did something else which I'll show you in a minute which is a pretty much straight out of stupidity let's take this out and have a look all right, well, I forgot to pull my outboard up before I reversed, and it did try and bend the pole, which I have to say, put up with it very, very well. It actually, well, it looks like there's a bit of a bend in here um, because of the camera angle. It's actually not so bad. What it did do is the outboard twisted sideways, dragged along the ground, and bent the fin, but it also rotated it off. And this whole end is a screw cap, which is now over tight. So I'm going to have to get a giant shifter and straighten that up. But I've done four of the eight bearings, so I'm going to go and finish them up first and then fix my stupidity here. All right, we've got a big ass shifter here. We'll see if we can straighten this up, hopefully without compromising the seal. Oh. Well, that's got the fin straightened up slightly. And to get the rest of this done, it's going to be a different matter. I don't want to break this aluminium piece off, but you tend to only get one bend with aluminium. So I might take the prop off here. Which I may need another one of them too. Grounded it out a little bit. Let's get you off. Right. Sends up my apprentice has come to see me. Yep. My apprentice. How you doing, apprentice? Good. I just only got one out. Mm. And David, you forgot to shut your door. No, I didn't. I'm gonna put stuff back in there soon. Oh! Trying to fix this. How do you like Yeah, it? can you like get out from under this? I don't want to hurt. <laughs> All right. I'm risking bending it off, so I'm gonna try percussive maintenance. And. It's looking a little bit straighter. Straight enough for me anyway. Let's put the prop back on and hopefully we don't lose the gudgeon pin. Yeah, this prop, um, it's grounded out a couple of times. It's about 30 Aussie dollary dues for another one, so we might find ourselves 
another one at some point. And I do have a proper spanner for putting this in under the seat, but that involves me getting up. So we'll just whack this back on like so. All right, crisis averted. Hopefully I haven't chewed up the rubber seal in here too much that it then leaks water, but see how we go. All right. All right, well now it's off the trailer. I can wash the trailer down and I can move it by hand a lot more easily. And so we'll be shoving that guy out, trailer in there, shuffle all the mechanic, do mechanical drafts is what my senior technician refers to it as. So um, I'll put this guy away, get everything moved. And uh, yeah, we'll continue with the maintenance. I know it's a quickie video, but I hope you had fun. See you all in the next one. You can open it right up if you want. Get a bit more pressure. There you go, open that right up. There you go. Really good. Don't stay calm. Alright. Oh, why do you got that?